Hello, good morning, everyone. This is Arjun Vijay from Alpha Street, and today we are speaking with Real Luck Group, which is an OTC-listed esports betting company with the ticker symbol LUKEF. We are joined by the CEO of the company, Thomas Rosander. Good morning, Thomas. How are you? Good morning. <laughs> Everything good here. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Uh, why don't you first give us a quick overview about the company and its history so that the viewers know what the company is all about? Sure. So uh, uh, the company started as a, uh, as a private company by uh, a couple of gentlemen from PokerStars. Uh, and after the, the usual struggles of, of a startup, uh, the company finally managed to to, to get listed and uh, with that, of course, raise some money. And we are now uh, under the name Real Luck Group. Uh, we are listed in, uh, in Toronto under the ticker uh, Luck, uh, best ticker ever for a company like us, I think. And, uh, and we're also uh, on the OTCQB uh, with the ticker Luke F. And uh, we, are pretty bullish about the, our vision and the vision is to become the number one, number one esports betting destination and that is something that uh, it doesn't come along that often that you actually have the possibility to be the best in, in something and uh, with esports and especially esports betting is still uh, nobody nobody has really claimed that position so we are uh, we're going for that basically and uh, uh, we're already live in uh, almost 80 countries. Um, we had a great boost during the pandemic as most uh, companies in this space. Uh, I think that uh, I get a lot of questions about the pandemic and so on. And, and I think it was definitely a boost, but I think it also hid the fact that esports and video gaming and therefore esports and therefore also esports betting, it is on a growth curve that is unstoppable, no matter what kind of hype or, or, or things happening. So, uh, and I think a lot of people got a little bit caught off of that and thought it was like uh, the high, they got caught in the hype and didn't realize that this is a, uh, a long-term massive wave and change of how people actually consume entertainment that is basically unstoppable that, that we are riding as well. And, Therefore, we have a long-term perspective on everything we do. Okay, great. And uh, you took over as the CEO earlier this year. Uh, tell us a bit about what were the challenges that you faced uh, when you started off and how things are going since then. Yeah, um, I came in uh, pretty much right after the race and, and the listing and realized that uh, or what, what you do when you come in in a position like in a new CEO role for any company. So you have to question, like, what's the vision? What are we going for here? Uh, what's the important thing? And what's the, what's the end game? And uh, we came to the conclusion very quickly that uh, it is to be the number one esports betting destination. A and uh, I realized that to get there, we have, we have a great base core product, if you call it, with front end and back end. But there were a lot of parts missing uh, for us to take it all the way. And therefore, I had to uh, pull the brakes a little bit uh, because we, we have a lot of money now in our pockets to do marketing and so on. And instead of, of spending it for less return of investment, uh, we basically decided to, okay, let's take it easy. Let's make sure everything is, uh, is up to par and uh, make sure that we can go all the way and, uh, and save the money basically and be careful with the, with the investor's money. But uh, now we're, we're very close to finally get, get going, which you know, of course I would have liked to do that from the beginning, but sometimes you just have to take the, the responsible route. So basically optimizing your expenses was your first focus. Yeah, I mean, we had to do that. We had to rebuild some stuff or we call it recalibrate. And uh, what we're going for to become the best, you have to have a completely new product and you have to have a product that applies to this new betting generation. Uh, and to get there, we had to rebuild some stuff. Uh, and 
And it's not just software, it's also a little bit how we work and, and, and our approach to, to marketing and so on. And, and that, unfortunately, that, that took a little bit of time and we estimated to about two quarters and uh, uh, yeah, we're, we're almost there. So All right, good cool. now. Great, terrific. And uh, Thomas, how do you see the presently existing regulatory landscape in the esports betting segment? I know it's been opening up a lot lately, but as the CEO of a sports betting company, how easy or difficult it is to navigate the space? Um, I'm very used to it since I, I've been in, in sports betting and uh, online casino for a very long time. And uh, things are changing very rapidly. And uh, we knew it would. So I think all companies have kind of been preparing for, well, let's call it all the serious companies who are doing it right. They are uh, have been preparing themselves for, for a regulated landscape for, for quite some time. Um, and, uh, and so are we, of course. And uh, it's, uh, it is tricky from the point that different regulators and different countries and, and regions they have a different approach to it i think uh, if i look at my home country sweden for instance it, it's one of the examples where it's not working very well um, because it's like their intention is not to take care of the players and, and so on it's more uh, make it as hard as possible for the companies and that is never a winning approach because people have always loved gambling and they always will. And you just have to make sure that they're safe while they're, while they're doing what they want. Uh, and the result of that is that there is uh, a lot of stuff happening outside of the regulation. And that is the, the absolute uh, opposite of what you want as a regulator. Uh, if I look closely to... Uh, like Denmark is an example where it actually worked uh, really well. And if we look at uh, North America, uh, the US and Canada now, it looks like it's going to be a really good regulation in Canada from, uh, from the insight I have into it right now. Uh, so we're very excited about that. And uh, uh, it's a little bit different between the states in, in the US as well. Uh, but it's... Uh, I think the general approach is, uh, is different uh, because uh, uh, it's about business, but it's also about taking care of the players and at the same time offering, being able to offer really good entertainment. And, and that's what it's about, so. All right, makes sense. Also on a related note, uh, Thomas, there are many established known companies in the traditional sports betting market. And uh, uh, as you said, thanks to COVID, many of them are now shifting focus to esports betting as well. Now, do you think that you hold a disadvantage there? Because these are familiar brands. They have an existing customer base, which can easily be, you know, transferred to uh, perhaps esports segment, while you don't have the luxury of doing that. So do you think that you, you actually have a disadvantage when compared to these kind of large companies? I, th I think the, the disadvantage we have is that they have very, very deep pockets. Uh, I don't see it as a problem now because uh, we also have a lot of money, nowhere near as close as them, but you know, we've been saving now for a while. And uh, I think the marketing and uh, the money we have is enough to take us where, where we have to go. Um, and I've done, I had success in this business with a lot less money in the past as well. Uh, and I think that uh, we have a huge advantage over them because they, the majority of the, the money they're making is coming from the traditional sports and, and the casino market. And that makes them less um, you know, motivated to, uh, to do the, to actually you know, invest in the, uh, in the innovation and the changes that this new betting demographic that that uh, uh, that is interested in esports that 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 is necessary to to attract them and uh, while we are you know we're coming straight into that and that's the whole business model that we're building for the new betting generation and we're doing it from the beginning and that's uh, 
that gives us an advantage. And of course, when you're doing something new and you're coming with innovation, it means that you have to uh, test, uh, see if it works, and then you know reiterate. And we can do that as a small company. You can do that so much faster than one of the giants. And uh, uh, I see it as a. I, I've been on both sides. I've been with big companies. I've been with with small, and. Uh, it is always the small one who come up with the cool stuff. Yeah, they might be bought, you know, and uh, uh, but that's where the innovation usually happens. So I uh, I love being on this side, and I'm super excited about what we have coming with Luckbox and uh, what uh, we're gonna surprise the big ones with. While we are on that topic, I see that at the end of the second quarter there was no debt on your balance sheet. Do you intend to keep it that way? Yeah, uh, I don't see any reason why we why that would change. Um, uh, we uh, we you know we we it's due to a lot of factors uh, during the last quarter or so. The the small and micro cap uh, has had a tough time, and the industry in itself had a tough time after the hype of the initial hype of esports and so on. So our share price is not where uh i think it should be at all uh and uh we are interested in in uh, mna stuff uh which i have announced earlier as well and uh, unfortunately this limit us a, a little bit with that but i think that uh during the uh the beginning of next year uh we're gonna show that uh uh it is a really good investment to to be with us and that's uh uh, and then hopefully we will be able to to get into that uh, uh, acti those activities again. Cool. Uh, just one last question, Nerd. What should investors expect from Riella Group over the next two years? Uh, uh, no, I, I I like that you say the two years because that is what you that is perspective. I think you should have. So in the long term, uh, I think it's going to go faster than two years. But uh, we are going to have. Uh, if not the absolute best uh, esports betting product out there, we're going to be among the best for sure. And but we are aiming to set the benchmark for markets and uptime and everything that is needed in in, in that uh, business. And we're going to have a a player experience that is really tailoring for video gamers and and this new betting generation. And, and that is. Uh, 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 that, that's like the the first pillar of our strategy to, to get there and it's uh, uh, it's gonna be interesting for all the other companies and competitors I think to see that uh, if we're looking at uh, a little bit more short term now uh, to we're adding online casino uh, which is something I I've, I've, I've had great success with as I mentioned and uh, uh, I think in the short term, that is something that's uh, gonna make sure that we we really uh, have a nice uh, revenue flow uh, while while we get to the uh, the number one esports betting destination. So that's that's the second pillar, and uh, of course, building online casino, which I've done a, a few times now. We're gonna do that also with the new esports betting uh generation in, in mind so it's gonna uh, be a little bit different than uh, what everybody's used to thomas i think it would make sense if you can briefly tell us a little bit about your background yeah so um i've been in this business for 17 18 years something or in the gaming business uh, uh started with the i came into this business doing with the online poker wave uh, very long time ago and uh, spent some time with, uh, with BWIN that uh, uh, now is in Tain and, and built up uh, online poker for them, but I also built up their business intelligence and, and so on. And after that, I was uh, very lucky to be handpicked to a special team within Electronic Arts, the video game publisher, to build the, their online gaming publishing unit. Uh, so I was part of launching all their free-to-play games, all the microtransactions, and lots of mobile games 
uh, across the world. Um, uh, and after that, I've been, uh, uh, I worked for online casino, Mr. Green, which is now uh, William Hill or, or actually Caesars and um, built their products and I was uh, CPO and CEO there. And uh, uh, just before done there, I, I did a online casino startup, uh, an online casino called Dunder uh, that uh, also exited and was bought by uh, an online casino called Kasum. So uh, I, I've, uh, I've, I've been on both sides on the video gaming and the uh, iGaming or online, online uh, real money gaming side. And I think that is something that uh, we have a lot of people who are, who are in the same position. I think that's one of our advantages uh, compared to the competitors because uh, this is right in the middle. And if you're too much video gaming or if you're too much uh, online real money gambling, uh, you're not going to hit it right. Uh, so we are we have experience from both sides and uh, I think that's a key. Terrific. I'll just leave you off there. It was great listening to you, Thomas. Thanks again for your time and response and all the best for your upcoming endeavors. Thank you very much.